brief or will leak 50% of the time over a period of five years. And so you think of, you know, why are we doing this, you know, both in the sense of the, the fracking process, but why are we in fact using that technology? 0.389% of the water in Canada is actually water in lakes and rivers and streams that we could actually get access to. You know. The other part of Saskatchewan, which uh, a lot of people don't, oh, I guess some people do realize that we're in a dry uh, climate, a dry area of the continent, but it, this is in fact what some of the scientists are talking about it as being a wet season. So you think of what we've had over the last uh, few decades is in fact been wetter than normal. There's been droughts in the neighborhood of 30 years happen fairly regularly so that you think of, okay, we, uh, some of our parents or grandparents would have gone through the, the 30s and dealt with that question. Well, that was only about 10 years long. Just imagine what, if we were to start now, what a 30-year drought and, and how many people would be left in Saskatchewan. And what could we do or what couldn't we do? There's been mega droughts, which I'm assuming is greater than 30 years, back in the 1400s as well as in the 1500s. So again, you're probably looking at maybe 50 to 70 years worth of droughts of lower than average water. The one that, that kind of uh, blew me away from was a comment by David Sotchin from the University of Regina talking about water flow in, in this area. They were able to look at the last thousand years of, of water in this in this province or in this you know, western uh, western provinces. And one interesting fact kind of bounced out of some of his investigations. He was able to get into the Hudson Hudson Bay fur trading records because of course those guys took very meticulous notes and unfortunately I couldn't uh, find the date but sometime in the last probably 400 years or so the North Saskatchewan River didn't run. So you think of well what would happen if you know, the North Saskatchewan didn't run? Look at Edmonton, look at uh, you know, all of the cities and and uh, people that use that water, uh, you know, all along that that river. What, what happened if you didn't have it running one year, or maybe two or three years? But, you know, just the idea. Uh, I don't think we're prepared for those types of discussions, and unfortunately, that might be what we're what we're dealing with. As far as that, it doesn't matter about these numbers because you don't have access to water. Uh, th this is a map, and, and there's, there's reports back to talk a little bit more about it. This is the, the watershed that we live in. That little black spot is Regina. So you've got Wascana Creek, which is, uh, goes off to the southeast. You've got the upper Coppell uh, River system, which includes our Buffalo Thumb Lake. You've got Last Mountain Lake, which again is, is, a, is a large uh, reservoir. And then we've got an area at the north end that's, that uh, drains uh, Lanigan, Manitou area. Uh, and an interesting uh, quandary we have in the last few years, I'm not sure what you've been hearing about the, the levels of uh, the Quill Lakes up essentially north of that. Uh, they, they, it's a closed basin, which means that the water is just running into the lake, and therefore the lake is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, there is a potential for that lake to actually spill over from one basin to another basin, which is a, something that's very common. And guess where it comes in? It comes in through the Lanigan management area, essentially running into uh, last month lake and then eventually into the Bell River system. And, but one of the bigger problems with that lake system is it's, it tends to be out, uh, saline, 
which means again, if you're looking at quality of water, then, then you've got then you've got problems with that saline water uh, coming into the lakes. Now we can't handle it, what do we do? The biggest one that I see is, is a problem is we potentially have five potash mines coming on stream probably in the next th probably 30 to 40 years. Each of those mines uh, uh, take a, a substantial amount of water out of the system. And one mine that they're suggesting has an estimated population value of 147,000 people. So just imagine you've got five mines, about 150,000 population. That's like adding three quarters of a million people into this province by simply putting those five mines into the ground. And again, you know, can the system handle that type of a, a draw? And again, that's just within this watershed that I just pointed out. That's not talking about any 